Hey Coin Collectors and welcome to DC Coin World International Coin Channel and this is it. The 1965 Jefferson United States nickel or five cents coin. And you can see looking at Jefferson it says in God we trust right in front of him. It says liberty behind him and there's a star there. And this isn't a dot, this is actually a star. Um, and then it says 1965. And I said in the title that there are some secrets. Well, what are the secrets? Well, there's some things that are on this coin that aren't on other coins, and there's some things that are on other coins that aren't on this coin, and we're going to kind of talk through them. But first, I probably should tell you why this is in the plastic and why I don't, I don't have it out of the coin set to look at it. As you probably are aware, in 1965, uh, they did produce some special mint sets. In fact, they produced 2.3 million of them. They Sometimes you see them in the catalog or listed as SMS, Special Mint Set. And this is actually the token that comes in the plastic. And so I've left it in the plastic for a reason, and I will tell you that in a second. Um, but first, let's take a look at it. And let me tell you the first secret that we're going to talk about. And that is that there is no mint mark on here. This coin came in the plastic and it came from the San Francisco Mint. So this should be an S coin. And you see down here, 1965. So it's, it came in an envelope just like this. Now some of you have are, are familiar with the other special mint sets which came in packaging like this. Kind of a cardboard packaging with the hard plastic in them. Well, in 1965, they hadn't got there yet, and so they simply had the uh, special mint set come in an envelope like they had some of the other mint sets in the past. So where's the S? Well, it's not here, um, and so let's tip it over to the other side, and we see this Monticello there. It says, E Pluribus Unum at the top, United States of America at the bottom, Monticello here in five cents, and there's no S here, because we know that in some of the older coins, uh, the uh, mint mark would be on the back. In fact, here's a 1964, the year before. Really pretty nice shape for circulating coin here. We tip it on the back and there's a D for Denver. The Denver Mint in 1964 put it on the back. What about the Philly Mint? Well, the Philly Mint in 1964 still didn't have a mint mark. So Philly didn't move in 1965 to anything. Um, they didn't have mint marks in 64, they didn't have mint marks in 65. Uh, so the Philly, 64, nothing on the back, but, so until 1964, the mint marks are on the back. Then they moved them to the front, um, but they didn't move them to the front until 1968. And why is that? Because in 1965, 1966, and 1967, the mint marks on the uh, coins were kind of banned. They just didn't put them on there. So in 1968, they moved back, and I'll show you where they put the mint mark in 1968. Ah, this is a 1968 S, and before you get too excited, remember that in 1968, the San Francisco Mint produced regular or general circulation coins. So in 64, they had the mint mark on the back. In 65, 66, and 67, no mint marks anywhere. And then in 68, they came back with the mint marks on the front, though. And here it is down here, the S mint mark. And this was, of course, San Francisco, Denver, and Philly um, all uh, had regular circulation coins in 1968. So what else is special about this? Well, one of the things that's kind of interesting about the 1965 is that not only did it have no mint mark, but it also had a different number of steps than we have uh, in the modern coins. So until 1989, there were five steps. So let's see if we can actually see them. This is, this is not just a plastic. This is a mint coin that just isn't still it isn't in great shape. Let's just put it that way. So let's tip it up so we can see the steps better. Uh, there we are. So you can kind of see the steps, but they're not, this, even though it never got circulated, the steps in the middle are not very good. There are five steps there. In 1990, um, they moved to six steps. And you can actually see this is a much better version. This is 
a 99 coin and you can see that the steps come all the way down. This one the steps should come down but you see in the middle uh, there are the steps are just worn off even though it's still in the plastic. All right, what else is special about this? Why do I keep it in the plastic? Well, it's not the quarter um, because the 25 cent coin in 1965 moved to a copper nickel clad copper. So while it's nice to have a 1965 quarter, the 1964 was 90 percent silver. The dime also moved to a copper nickel clad copper and you can see the copper in there. So it's not the dime. It's not the penny, though this is a beautiful 1965 penny, a little bit of red to it, as you can see. It's this coin right here. In 1965, they moved all of the United States coins away from silver except for this one. And what they did with the Kennedy half was moved it to a 40% silver from the previous 90%. So in 1964, 90% silver. In 1965, 40% silver, but it's still silver, and if we tip it up, you can actually see that it's silver, and it's just a beautiful coin, so it's worth a few dollars just in silver alone. And speaking of value, what's a 1964, 19, I mean, 1965 nickel worth? Well, the five cents coins, they made 136 million of these coins in 1965, so they didn't make many. And when I say 136 million is not many, I'm comparing it to say 1964. For the 1964 coins, they made a ton of them. They made 2.8 million, I mean 2.8 billion, 2.8 billion between the Philadelphia and Denver Mint in 1964. So they just really pushed them out with uh, the Denver Mint Marks and no Phillies on them. And then in 1965, they said, we have so many nickels out there, they only made 136 million. So essentially, they made about 1 20th or 1 25th of their normal supply in 1965. So these, even in general circulation, are not that easy to find. All right, well, that's all we have today from DC Coin World. Oh, what are they worth? It, this coin right here is probably worth six to eight dollars. If you can find an uncirculated uh, one in MS65 or above, it's going to be worth eight to ten dollars. And the higher you go, the more expensive they're going to be. Um, you do not almost never find these in the MS67 or 68, and that's when you're going to be starting to get up into the hundreds of dollars. All right, thanks for watching DC Coin World. We'd love to have you subscribe to our channel and leave any comments you might have in the comment section.